Today we're looking at four ways to get the most out of your keyboard. These features are often overlooked in many keyboards, and it's right there in your owner's manual how to do it. Today we're gonna to go over them in this beautiful Yamaha P515. We're gonna highlight how to use them and what might make your instrument more fun. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support. And we love to interact with you. Got a couple things that give us some shortcuts. I know. So, new ways to excitement. So it's having a keyboard, having a digital piano, can be very exciting at first. It, it can be like, okay, I've got this really cool thing. It does all this, there's all these buttons. It does all this stuff. It plugs in the wall. I can put headphones on. And a lot of the times, all that stuff is forgotten in the first month and it's like, I'm practicing my piano again. Hopefully, you know, because the, the goal is to practice piano and to be doing it on a dedicated rhythm. And, but a lot of the times we lose track of how many cool things this thing yeah, can do. I mean, after a month or so in the house, whether you're using it every day or all day long, uh, the novelty in the newness does wear off. Mm -hmm. And so then all of a sudden you find yourself, man, I've had this like a couple months and I seem to just be playing piano on it. Yeah. And so we decided to pick four things that we just real short, four things we say make this more enjoyable and make it more of a creativity machine um, and really kind of bring the most out of it. Um, it kind of can get you more interested in it or get your kids more interested in this um, and really kind of make the piano yours and make the digital mm -hmm. instrument yours. So right off the bat, my personal favorite, onboard recording. Yes. And so onboard recording, most keyboards that are, you know, even north of $100 will have some sort of recording functionality on it. Um, it's something that you see, um, you know, at first it was only on the most expensive items and it's trickled down over the years, but some sort of either one track or two track recorders. On the more expensive instruments, of course, you get 16 track recorders. Um, but what does that mean? It means you can hit one easy button and we'll show you here in a second, but you can hit one easy button, hit record, lay down, you know, piano, lay down a bass sound, lay down electric piano, and then, you know, stop the recording once you're happy with it and then go back and play and play along with it. You know, you can either layer a couple different sounds so you can layer. So say, uh, what's the song everyone loves to play on piano? Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. And so you can lay down the, the bass. If you're just by yourself at home, you can lay down the like the bass. Chord pattern. Yeah, the chord pattern at the bottom and then work on the melody up at the top and play along with it. Um, but really kind of just opens your mind to, oh, this is how recording music goes. It also works if you're learning a difficult passage because what the recording function does, it, it again, you get to re-listen to it. But as a player in learning literature, it's nice to look at the music and not have to think about playing it while you're listening to it. And a lot of times the things that your teacher's trying to teach you that you're not doing right stands out so you can finally hear it. And that's the most important thing about recording is it makes your own mistakes kind of uh, obvious to you where sometimes a lot of times if someone's saying, no, play it like this, play it like this, and they keep, you can't quite get the feel and, and because you're not listening 100%. Yeah, you're playing. You're, you're thinking about right, the playing. Right. And, so, and so, yes, it's uh, record and playback is just a very useful tool and also something that can help you create and make your own music. Well, make your own songs, yeah. Yeah, it's so let's, let's just show you real quick on the P515. We'll record something and then layer over it. Great. So as you can see, very simple process, and you don't have to be an advanced player to do this. You can record at, you know, as sloppy or as detailed and meticulous as possible. Really kind of just allows you, especially if you have headphones on, allows you 
to enjoy what you've recorded or to like, you know, be critical on yourself or, you know, polish things up and then go back over and record over it and have a good time. You can be your own accompanist mm -hmm. and then you can find out when you're just trying to sing the lead part to your song that it's out of my range. Yeah. So, so recording, huge tool. Please use it on your piano if it has it. It will make you a better player. It, might you, it will make you enjoy it more um, and really see the funk, you know, the beauty of music and how... These, you know, these notes down here will sound good when you play them with different notes up here. Um, and it kind of just opens up music. Well, yeah, and it's kind of like giving yourself, uh, like if you're singing a song and you can actually sing 100% better, when you just like you can listen better when you don't have to play. Mm -hmm. And then if it's out of your range, well, then you can transpose it. So number two on our list, transpose. Great feature. You don't have to relearn hand positions. You don't have to write out a new chart that's a third lower or whatever it is. You can just... Change yeah, so so very professional level musicians use transpose. Very novice beginners use transpose. It really takes the instrument and it's a it's a cheat code. And it and and it's the most common key that people know. And we've talked about this in our videos is the C major chord in A minor an A minor scale. Sorry, C major scale, A minor scale, all white notes. Very easy to remember because you don't have to remember any patterns. It's all laid out for you. Um, and with the transpose button, you can go up you know, up to eight or, you know, even more, you can go up eight or plus eight minus. Well, you can go down. That's the mm -hmm. important thing is that a capo, it's kind of like putting a capo on a guitar. You can capo the piano, but more importantly is you can capo it in the negative direction to make yeah. the strings longer. So, so, you so tune down. Transposing sounds complicated, but it really makes it easy. So say uh, you are playing with one of your friends who plays guitar and they're like, this song's an E and all you know how to do is play in C. The, the, if all you know is your C chord, your F chord, your G chord. You would just simply transpose. So your C is going up one, two, three, four. And so now your C is actually an E. And, and we'll show you in, the, in a video in your, here in a second, but really it just, it just takes that E and it moves it down to the C. And so you're playing a C chord, but really what's coming out is an E chord. Um, and so you don't have to do any, any mathematics in your head. You're just like, okay, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play the one, the four, and the five, like they said. Just the enjoy e. playing what you know and it'll sound different. Yeah, and so, and so it's, a, it's a really useful tool. A, a lot of people think it's complicated, but it, it makes everything actually easier for you, um, especially when you're playing with other musicians and you know, you're know you stronger playing in C or playing in F or playing whatever key you're comfortable with, you can transpose and, and stretch it one way or the other, um, either for your singing or for playing with other musicians. Um, and so let's look at the transpose function just real quick, show you a quick demo on the P515. So really an easy tool to use and very functional, very uh, just opens up the instrument to be a, a utility for you. Um, moving right along to our third favorite thing that is often overlooked, rhythms. Rhythms. And accompaniment, if, depending on the model. Most of them come with all different kind of things. Mm -hmm. So on, on the P515, we'll show some rhythms in a, sec in a second, but really what, what can be boring, a metronome click, Oof. click. Click, Not click. only that, the metronome always emphasizes the downbeat of one. Mm -hmm. And that's not where the kick drum, um, at, that's where the kick drum hits. Because yeah. the real downbeat is like two and four and a four four. So yeah. it's like people that clap on one would be that bell you get on a metronome. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, and so rhythm really It's the opposite to the groove. Yeah, it, rhythm really helps you understand different grooves, different feels, and so, uh, a lot of instruments, again, all the way from the lowest priced ones, under $100, will have some sort of rhythm section um, where it really kind of opens up the functionality and makes it more enjoyable to say, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna practice, but I'm going to be practicing to a rock beat or I'm going to be practicing to a shuffle. A drum pattern is so much easier to play with than a metronome mm -hmm. because it has... It takes all the thinking out and it's just based on feel and groove. Yeah, and so it will really expand your musical knowledge and say, okay, I'm... 
you know, I need to feel where the notes come in more than I need to be in time with this clicking right. robotic sound. And so modern modern technology has made it very easy to have great drum sound, sounds in pretty much any model um, and really kind of makes it a more enjoyable experience for kids, for adults, for anybody. Um, it feels like you're more a part of, of a musical ensemble. Most importantly, over a long period of time of playing with, with a, a, a drum beat or a drum sample is that you're going to be playing in time. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. As you learn and as you progress, it'll always be in time. So your, your playing won't slow down or speed up. It will be right, right precise. You won't be jumpy in your rhythm. So let's just listen to a couple of drum samples here um, and maybe play along with them for a second, but just really a fun function. Patrick, pretty groovy. It's very groovy. It's fun. It's fun. It makes it more enjoyable to play with a drum, especially if you're changing voices and you know creating um, a certain sound or a certain feel that you're looking for. Um, so again, these are our four things that we think make keyboard digital pianos more enjoyable. Four things you might be overlooking. Um, so again, recording, onboard recording is huge. A lot of fun to go back and listen and play and add along. Um, our second one is transposing. transposing, really a fun functionality where you can, you know, become more of an expert and learn how to play in different keys by not actually having to learn how to play in different keys. So if you're a novice um, or if you're advanced and you're really good at your, your scales on C and you're really good at your runs, keep it all in C and, and, then, and then just transpose up and down. Uh, our third one, drum rhythms accompaniment on some on some instruments you can add in bass and drums and all that and it plays along with you really kind of creates a, a full sound so it reminds me of like those organs but like a better execution yeah, it's cool to practice your runs too because you can get them in time in time like yeah and that brings us to number four connectivity of your device and so every digital keyboard every portable digital every high-end digital uh in-home digital piano um, is going to have its own set of of connectivity, um, but a lot of times these are overlooked because it's like, oh, there's a whole bunch of you know ins and outs on the back oh, of the, it. It's the headphone and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and it gets confusing. It seems like, I don't know what they just do. I don't want to mess with them. I just want to practice. But there's some really cool functionality in there. Absolutely. And so we grouped it all together, but some of my favorite things in the connectivity are Bluetooth. A lot of the, the newer instruments that are coming out are Bluetooth enabled, at least Bluetooth MIDI or Bluetooth audio. Um, Bluetooth audio, you can hook up your phone and have uh, your music 
come through the speakers of the unit. So if you have some really nice speakers on board, this P515 has great speakers. You can play the Beatles out of it's here. You great can play, to jam with. Yeah, you can play anything you want out of, this, out of the speakers and then also be playing along. Bluetooth MIDI uh, is going to be uh, more of connecting to like an iPad um, or to uh, a, MIDI, a MIDI device where, you know, the Yamaha has this app um, called the Smart Pianist. And in that app, it can control, you know, selecting different sounds, recording, all that stuff from the touch screen on an iPad. Um, it really kind of, it turns over control from the unit to that the Bluetooth. IPad. Yeah, the iPad. So uh, Bluetooth MIDI is huge. Um, what else? I, there's headphone jacks. Obviously, this one has two. Um, so Still has hardwired for MIDI in and out. Yeah, hardwired for MIDI. There's, uh, there's audio outs, which is really cool. So... Say you have, you know, you have a great feeling action, but this, you know, have really dinky speakers on your on your unit at your house. You can plug that into a sound system or to studio monitors and really kind of start getting a really full articulate sound um, just by by upping the the wattage on your speaker system. Um, and yeah, so there's just there's a whole bunch of cool connectivity and really reading your also has the ability here with through this USB port to store some of your recordings and store your songs. Yes, yeah, store. And or, so you could take it from here and put it into your computer mm -hmm. or just connect it from this output to your computer. Yeah, and so you can plug in uh, directly to your computer and be recording, bypass basically a uh, um, like an audio interface. Um, you can plug right into your computer and start using this as a controller. Um, and so, you know, you, it, it gets complicated, but really... You, if, if you're a novice, you can start watching some videos on how to connect this to your computer so that you can be playing drums on, on your unit or you can be uh, you know, downloading different samples and adding them to, to your unit. But it becomes a controller a lot like a keyboard plugging into your uh, – a typing keyboard right. plug it into your, into your computer. Um, so just know the connectivity on your instrument. And last but not least, you can always charge your phone on the USB port. On some of the on units, of you can charge your phone on it um, while you are playing. Um, so just really cool features, a lot of times overlooked. Uh, again, the four, recording on board, lots of fun, very easy to understand, record and playback on here. Um, lots of fun. Uh, second, transposition, transposing your- Up or down. Yeah, up or down, getting in the key that you want to be in playing with the with the scale that you're most comfortable with. Um, rhythms and drum beats and all that are a lot of fun. Um, and then of course, number four, your connectivity of the instrument. Make sure you're taking full advantage of, you know, what, what you're paying for. Pull all your technology together. Yeah, well, those are the four things. If you think we left one off the list of, hey, no, make sure you're doing this or that, please leave a comment. Lots of people are interested in how they can maximize what they've purchased and have a good time doing playing music and learning um but these are the four that we we're specifically highlighting because we see them overlooked so a lot of the, they're, they're overlooked and people are like i don't know how to do that it seems hard just start experimenting and having fun with it that's really the goal mm -hmm. it's ted barcelou i'm patrick marr with alamo music you can find us online at alamomusic.com if you're ever in san antonio come say hi we also have stores in austin st louis and kansas city and we'd love to see you guys Thanks for watching.